Hey guys, Somebody's Gun here. Today we're going to VOD review Andilix and Nate. These two won the EU FNCS Duo Grand Finals. They were amazingly consistent, won one game, and unfortunately the file is corrupted so we can't watch the win. But I do believe they come in six with eight elims in this game. So fairly solid gameplay off of them and let's hop right into it. Typically I'm not going to start off this early in the game but one thing i do want to point out is a command and knowledge of your drop spot and dilix here has a perfect drop on this location he knows where to go and because of that he gets a kill onto ice ice teasy i guess is his name and this now gives them a huge advantage. They were contested by a team, likely this one, this entire time, right off the drop. So if you are the best dropper in your POI, that gives you a huge advantage because then you can do things like this. Much like you see Unknown and Ronaldo drop on the cigar out in Slurpy Swamps, these guys land on the hotel and give themselves an advantage by being able to put tags on players before they even get a chance to land. That's huge. That's dominating your drop spot. And now if we look at Nate, he's already pushing the other player out of this POI. It's not going to wind up being an elim, but now they have all of Sweaty Sands to themselves, which is huge. When they're normally splitting this, now they have an entire POI to themselves. And if we go back over to Andilix, I believe we passed what I wanted to show you guys. But he knows that another team's going to land over in this location towards uh, the heavy sniper area. So after he goes and gets these mats, he's going to check that area, make sure no one is going to be pushing this way. He's going to try and get some visuals on another team. Uh, maybe I did pass it or he didn't get there yet. Anyway, he's just very aware of, you know, where a potential team could be. He's looking to see... Now that he sees all those builds over there, is there going to be tags? Quickly realizes there's going to be no nothing, points out where players are, but then continues again on their loot path. So just a little thing to own your, your POI, your drop spot, is going to be having the best drop possible and then moving forward, also understanding where players land around it so you can act accordingly. But... We're going to go ahead and speed this up because not too much happens here. They're just going to farm up, grab loot, rotate out of here. And again, nothing crazy. Just going to hit four times on this. Um, one thing they are able to accomplish is sitting on edge of zone and then... Each rotation, they're going to try and get as far as possible. But once one of either of the two starts to get tagged, they base up if they're in zone and are complacent with playing in this area. Now, they will push for slightly different elevations, like they waited to get on top of this zone. And let me slow this down because we do have an engagement coming here. And this is a mid-ground fight that you don't always see from some of the top teams. You know, a lot of the top teams will avoid these these mid-game fights, but Andilix and Nate are able to win this one. They spot Thomas and Clusia coming in early, and Andilix is able to get some shots on them, or notice someone else at least get shots on them, in addition to their own shots, which then make this a fight to take. And likely the plan there for Clusia and Thomas was to try and ramp over this team because you'll see when a team has a floor or a cone on top of them, it's a little easier to ramp up above them because they're going to have to make an edit in order to get over or in order to fight you. So typically teams that are going to be covered are easier to ramp over or to land on from a launch pad. Now, just another play here. We're going to see 
They fall on tons of loot because they have two players essentially come to them and become a free care drop. So, extra rockets. They're just going to go grief someone. And, you know, you may not think that, like, this is a big deal. But every piece of material that you can get someone else to spend, every piece of shield, all the time that people take... These all come into effect later on in the game. So maybe this team that they shot at isn't able to build as much later in the game. Or they don't have a shield to replenish. Or they got stuck in a fight, so therefore they got focused on their rotation. Now that doesn't happen because they rotate up this way. And so another thing we're going to point out here is them just sitting in the cones. They're well above Storm Surge. It's not even going to hit. This fight does not need to happen. They have no information on this other team. They haven't heard any shield break. They haven't heard anyone get knocked. So without any information, they relax. They sit in their cones. They play this safe and let these teams get out of here. Um, that's going to be one of the smartest things you could do in these games because you want to make it to end game. Each fight, each engagement you get yourself into decreases your chances of winning the game. And that's the ultimate goal is to get the victory royale. You may be able to grab a couple of eliminations, but at this point in the game, you're missing out on every single placement point. So playing it safe, sitting in your cone, letting these guys rotate out of here. And then just going into zone themselves. So let's speed this back up. And this is a fairly safe rotation. We'll see them build more than you typically would need to. But because you don't want to have to risk extra shields. You don't want to spend shields. You can trade those for materials. And just one little piece we'll see Nate here. He's going to build a box above him. We'll do it here shortly. And he builds it in metal, but because metal is so weak initially, he builds the box, lets it build, and then that can be used later once it's fully built. You don't want to hop into a newly built metal box because one, it gives people tons of vision. In my opinion, metal is the easiest to see through when it's initially placed. Then secondly, it's going to be super weak, so you can get lobby sprayed. And third, if you just let it build and someone does shoot at it, they're not going to gain anything. If you have a base below, you're able to comfortably wait. Anyway, these are just the little things that, that make a difference in these games. Now he can go up in this metal box with confidence. No, no one's really going to bother him. Boom. Gets the elim. And easily enough, they're not even really going to be contested to grab this loot. So I think they're starting to realize that not many people are in this area of the map. So they're going to mosey on over, grab this loot. Everyone appears to be distracted, and they're just going to scoop this without any con contest by another team. So that's a good refresh. Primzy shoots a couple shots in there, but nothing crazy. And if we look at their mats, they're looking really good on mats. About 220, 230 total materials going into fifth zone. They refresh on this pad, so I don't know if you guys were able to see, but before they got this elim, Someone placed a pad down. It's going to be over to their right. There's a pad right here. And they knew this while rotating because both Nate and Andelix have their own pad. But they see there's a community pad. It's going to be an easier rotation for them. Might as well grab this refresh on the way. So we'll speed this up to their rotation. Slow it down when they're in the air here. And one thing I've noticed they do is every time that they're going to land from a pad, 
they have metal ready to build so they're not gonna build in brick or wood unless it's very late in the game and they, they have no option but when given the option they immediately build in metal i think it's kind of make a statement dissuade players to from shooting at them when you initially build and also if you get there early enough and no one shoots it that gives you a strong hold on this area that you just landed in so gives you a lot of control they built a fairly large base between and Dilix and nate having to come back up do wind up getting a little greedy here opening this for too long and we will see that i believe nate gets rpg'd back here while they're looking for one that's the end of that that's why you should always close your builds while reloading an RPG, a heavy snipe. Uh, it's very easy to to get lazy or to forget or to not see a team. So, I mean, just as a general rule, you should always close while reloading your RPG or a heavy snipe. We'll see them here again. It's uh, a fairly easy rotate. You wouldn't expect it as they were super high here, but almost half the lobby's in the air. So as long as you're not the one to get focused, you're doing all right. We see again, and Dilix lands. He's building in metal. He's playing it safe, and they're gonna heal up. But they're not in zone yet, so you can't you can't sit around and do nothing. If your teammate's healing, you gotta push ahead and get more space. Get yourself further into zone. Now another option would be to sit there and hold walls for them. But if you're in decently built metal, you know it's not gonna be too big of an issue. Now, one of the things that does really well for them here is this double RPG, which double RPG, double heavy snipe, boom bow, uh, heavy snipe, RPG, heavy snipe. There's a lot of different options that involve communication, and we can see clearly here that this team knows what they're doing. So that pressure from the double RPG causes chaos between Scram and his duo which then turns this into an easy elim as Scram then backs into their own builds. But unfortunately, they're gonna wind up getting slightly split up for a second. They do get that elim to come across, but they get back together. And that's huge, you know, once the e once you pad, it is so important to get back together with your teammate, get on the same page and start controlling an area again because that that's really what it comes down to in these late games you want to control an area with your duo and these double rpgs just raining down we see nate picking up more limbs and now this is going to be a difficult rotate they both use their pads so now you're going to have to go up and this is where they lose one another this floor is edited becomes a problem and now they're both playing solo it works out decently they're able to get sixth place here i believe but if they stay together this could turn into a win this can turn into many more elims as now nate is down on seven materials and he has to play this much differently than you would have if you were together and that's really it i mean we're gonna see him go down as he has to fight zone and players but hope you guys enjoyed the video a lot of different points and clear takeaways you can see from this duo here they're very consistent they stick together very well in endgame and there's a reason that they are the eu fncs duos champions right that kind of consistency that kind of gameplay is what wins you fortnite tournaments you can't just have one big pop-off game and expect to win you got to do it time and time again but thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed the video feel free to share with your friends like subscribe do all those things that you're supposed to do when you want to support someone on youtube or twitter whatever it may be uh, thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time